Hello and welcome to SBG Support Center. In this second part, we are going to see how to configure your Ellipse INS. Let's begin. We will start by sensor configuration. In this first section, you will select the motion profile that corresponds to your vehicle. Each one of it corresponds to a specific configuration for the Kalman filter, so you have to choose it wisely. In alignment, you will determine the orientation of the IMU on the vehicle by selecting the axis alignment, and if necessary, you can adjust it with the fine misalignment angles. In main lever arms, you will insert a reference point that will be considered as a reference point for the external Kalman filter measurements and calculation, i.e. position and velocity. And here, if you're using a magnetometer and you don't have access to GNSS input, you need to know that the Earth magnetic field slowly changing over the time, and we call that secular variation. So it's necessary to initial position and date to compensate this variation. Let's move to assignment. In this section, you can enable the internal and external edin sensors connected to the INS, then configure them in the next section. For Genesis, we will leave internal model, but you may also select external and use various models, such as Septant Rio, Novatel, NMEA, or UBlox. Here for GNSS, if you have measured your lever arms with a precision less than 1 cm, you can check this box to improve the robustness and performance of your sensor. Otherwise, you can enter a rough lever arm with an accuracy of 1 to 10 cm, and in this case, please uncheck the box to let the Kalman filter refine the lever arm automatically. Same if you're on dual antenna mode. And here, auto-rejection is advised for all measurements. This mode automatically detects if a measurement can be trusted or not. For the configuration of other add-ins, such as odometer or DVL, please refer to the operating handbooks for land, marine or airborne application that are available on SPG Support Center webpage. And if you're using a magnetometer, please check our video about magnetic calibration that is also available on SBG Support Center webpage and on YouTube. Let's move to input and output configuration. Here you can configure all the input and output interfaces. For serial communication, you need to select the baud rate and communication mode. In events, in input, Sync in pins can be used to send or receive a pulse to the ellipse. An input pulse can be used as an event marker or as a PPS input. And the pulse output can be a PPS signal or one of the input pulses. If your ellipse supports CAN communication, you may configure it here. Every CAN message ID must be individually defined to avoid incompatibilities with other materials. Every CAN message identifier is encoded on 11 bits. But if you check this box, you will encode it on 29 bits. Let's move to data output configuration. Here you will select the output format of your data according to your use. You can choose SBG Ecom binary logs that are used in SBG binary format. And for the ASCII format, there is three types. There is the proprietary and standard and MEA that comes out of the external command filter. And there is the third party format. And finally, in advanced, you will configure the synchronization and the thresholds. These thresholds 
will determine when the validity status flag will be OK. At this stage, the configuration is completed. You can now return to the main page of SBG Center and check status of the device and display graphs of your choice. This is the end of this video. I hope you learned a lot of things with me. If you have any question, you can call our technical support team and we will always answer. Thanks for watching this video. See you on the next one.